In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use navigation component using Jetpack Compose. And you know, big spoiler alert, it's exactly the same. But I think this is another reason why Compose is so great. It just makes, it really speaks to the interoperability. All of these kind of pre-existing components or pre-existing tools, uh, you can still use with Compose and it's very easily easy to integrate Compose while you still use these components. Whether it's navigation components, you know, Hild for dependency injection, view models, fragments, um, you know, you name it, name your Android thing and Compose is built to really work well with that Android thing. And I'll show you, you know, how easy it is to set up navigation component. Again, spoiler alert, it's, you know, exactly the same. All right, so step one is always get the dependencies. So go to this link here, developer.android.com, guide, navigation, navigation getting started. Or you can just Google, you know, navigation component Android in Google, and it's probably going to be the first link that comes up here. So here we are, the getting started guide. Now, I'm not gonna go through this, obviously. This is not a navigation component kind of tutorial, although I'm, I am gonna show you how to set it up. So all we need to do here is get the, the, the version. So this is the nav version 2.3.2. .2. Go back to Android Studio, and let's go into the build.gradle file and close this so I can actually see what's going on. I, I cranked up the font size for you guys so you can really see this really easily. So paste in that nav version, now go back to the documentation. And we're using Kotlin, so I'm just getting these two Kotlin dependencies right here, the fragment KTX and the UI KTX. So copying both of those, I don't need the Kotlin comment, just those two are fine. Now press sync and we'll be ready to use navigation component. So currently we have a single fragment. So if we go into our project view over here, I'll close build.gradle because we don't need that. We currently only have, you know, recipe list fragment, but we, we need another fragment. The finished version of the app has two fragments which one is recipe list fragment and one is recipe fragment. So let's create that second fragment. So go up to a new Kotlin file and call this recipe fragment. Now this will be a class, of course. It's going to extend the Android X fragment class. Just open this up. And I'm not going to do, I'm not going to put anything in here right now. It's just going to be sort of a blank uh, well, I guess I could I could import the on create view function. So let's just go over to I'll close this to give us some more room. First of all, uh, come over here, just grab this on on create view function, copy it, go back to recipe fragment, paste it in, and let's just inflate like kind of like a kind of a basic sort of composable here. Let's just say return, you know, compose compose view. We'll do require context. Do uh, I think you do apply and then set content is what we need. And I'll just do a you know a title up here that says uh, recipe fragment. And uh, this is giving me a deprecated warning, I believe, because the import changed. Whoops. So if I get rid of this and I re-import this, it should give me some choices. I want to get the compose UI text import. I think that one's good. So it's from material. That's right. The old import was from foundation. The new one is from material. So getting that text import. Now we have a nice sort of title. Hey, why not give it a column and give it a, give it a modifier also just to kind of make it look a little better, even though I know this is just kind of a placeholder for now, but let's, let's just add a little bit of padding anyway, and then just throw that title inside of here. So now we have our second fragment and we have our first fragment, which was recipe list fragment. I'm actually going to, um, well, I'll leave them open actually. Now let's create the navigation graph. So if you've used, used navigation component before, which probably most of you have, you know that it's all about this kind of navigation graph thing. Whenever you have your fragments, you can then move on to building this graph. And the graph outlines sort of what the navigation is gonna look like between your application or in your application. So right click on res, go to new Android resource file, and I'm just gonna call this, uh, I'm gonna call this main graph. And make sure to change the resource type to navigation. Otherwise, it's just gonna generate a plain old XML file. So click OK, and now I'm gonna close this view to give us some more room. And you know, there's very few things in Android Studio that I like to use the design tab for, but navigation component is one of them. This is one of the very few kind of tools that I like to use the, this design tab for. Otherwise, I think it's just too slow for other things. So let's go up here, click on this plus icon. It says add new destination. We're gonna add our recipe list fragment. Boom, there we go. It's now added to our navigation graph. Now add our second fragment, which is recipe fragment. And now I'm gonna click on recipe list fragment, click on this little dot and drag it over to recipe fragment. So what that's gonna do is if we go over to our code tab here, you can see that two fragments have been added. Here's the first one for recipe list. 
and here's the second for the recipe fragment. Because I connected the two with that, that, uh, that line, it generated this action sort of attribute inside of this fragment. So this is a, this is a destination sort of, uh, I guess, action. This, this defines an action that can be taken on the graph or a navigation, like me navigating from one fragment to another. And this is defined as navigating from recipe list fragment since it's inside this fragment tag. And I'm going to the destination, which is recipe fragment. Now I'm gonna change one thing in here. I'm gonna change the ID of this. I'm gonna change this to uh, view recipe. By default, it generates these kind of long, uh, very descriptive names. These are fine, there's nothing wrong with them. I just, you know, in a small project like this, there's no need to be so descriptive. It's pretty obvious what is navigating to what. So I'm just gonna call this uh, view recipe, because that's what it is. We're navigating from like a list fragment to like a detail fragment where I'm gonna be viewing a specific recipe. So this is our navigation graph. Now we need to tie this navigation graph into the rest of the application. Now, the easiest way to do this is if we go into activity main, so going into resource again, go into activity main, and we use a special container for our graph, and we, we kind of tie our graph into our main activity and uh, set it up that way. By the way, if there's ever any point in this video when you think that man, it would be nice to you know have some more inf information on navigation component. I made lots of videos on navigation component. All of my newest courses basically from, I don't know, mid last year, mid 2019 up until now contain navigation component as the main navigation system. But if you don't wanna pay for a course or you just don't wanna watch a whole course, I have a video, I'll put a link up here to, I made a, a video that says uh, kind of navigation component all in one video. The video is like an hour long, I think. Think. It's quite long, 40 minutes to an hour long, but it shows you, you know, everything you need to know about navigation component. So if you want to know more about it, uh, and you know, maybe you have some questions about the things that I'm going through here, I'm going through pretty quickly, go watch that video and it will definitely clear up any kind of questions that you have. So here in activity main, we're still going to use our fragment container view, but we're going to set this up a little differently. First, I'm going to give myself some more room to give you guys a better view. I'm going to change this to main nav host fragment. This is kind of the typical naming convention that you give to a, a, a view or a container for a navigation kind of host. This is what this thing is going to be called a navigation host. And that's why the next attribute is going to be this name parameter. And we're going to reference a special class that's contained in the navigation component um, library. We're going to call it Android X navigation dot fragment dot nav host fragment. This is a special class. It's, it's called nav host fragment and it's for hosting uh, navigation graphs, navigation systems. Uh, but we need, do need to set some other attributes. The first one being default nav host. So it looks like it's not coming up. So I'm going to have to write that out. So I'll do app default nav host and set that equal to true. And then the last parameter here is going to be app nav graph and set that equal to at whoops at navigation and set that equal to the main graph. Also, by the way, if you want more information on how to set up navigation component, all this information is in the documentation. So if you went to that like getting started guide that I was at at the beginning of this video, it takes you through everything you need to know here. Uh, you know, one of these first things is probably, yeah, boom, there you go. There's the fragment container view where it tells you to set the nav host fragment as the name, uh, you know, nav, default nav host true, and then reference your graph. So same kind of stuff, it's all in the documentation. So at this point, our navigation graph is all set up. So we we have our graph here. It says the start destination is recipe list fragment. It says we have one action that's available that's navigating from recipe list fragment to recipe fragment. And uh, we have our two fragments. So we can actually go into uh, main activity and we can delete this, this support fragment manager begin transaction stuff because we just don't need this anymore. We have our graph set up and it just by, you know, in main activity by setting this fragment container view and the nav host fragment, setting it to the graph, it knows how to navigate the app. So at this point, let's just run it and I wanna show you that it's working and the fragment, the recipe list fragment does actually come into view. So there's the app starting and we see that recipe list fragment, it has come into view. So now let's go back to Android Studio and I can delete this horizontal dotted progress. We're not gonna need that anymore. Let me just delete that, delete anyway, even though it's not safe. We can also delete this fragment recipe list XML. I'll delete that. We're not going to use that anymore. 
and delete anyway, don't care. Now close the graph, close main activity, close activity main, and now let's change recipe list fragment to uh, inflate a different kind of composable and also be able to handle the navigation to that recipe fragment. So let's, uh, let's build this out. So let's return a composable. So return compose view and we just do require context dot apply then set content. And then there we go. We're ready to kind of build out a composable. So let's use a column with a modifier and we want to add some padding to this modifier. 16 DP is typically kind of the default Android standard for padding of the main sort of content section. Now do a text, say text equals recipe list because that's what this is it's recipe list fragment now move all this to the next line to kind of clean it up and now let's add some kind of styling just a little bit of styling because i want to change the text size so text style is the the uh, object that gets passed to the style attribute and it has a whole bunch of different parameters one of them is the font size and you know from a couple of videos ago how to change the talk uh, the font size we can do text unit dot companion dot sp and then reference what sp value we're changing that text size to so that's kind of like the header just so we know like which fragment we're in now i'm going to use a spacer and do modifier equals modifier dot padding and just do 10 dp of padding just to kind of space that out from the next composable that we're going to put here and now i'm going to use a button and this button is going to take us to or it's going to be responsible for executing the function that takes us to the next fragment so first i'll add a text uh, composable in here that says you know to recipe fragment to describe what this button is going to do so putting some text inside the button and now inside the on click function for this button I want to do find navigation controller dot navigate and then reference the action for navigating from recipe list fragment to recipe fragment well you know the idea of that it's just r dot id dot view recipe and if you need a reminder of where that comes from if you go into the main graph again remember we just have this single action right here that's defined and this action defines the navigation to this destination which is a recipe fragment and the idea of this is view recipe so that's what i'm calling right here i'm saying find my navigation controller which can be done uh, very easily by calling find navigation controller, then calling dot navigate and referencing that action. So that'll take us to that next fragment. Now we're just gonna do one last thing. I'm gonna go into, well first actually copy, uh, let's copy this text at this uh, text composable and go into recipe fragment and just paste over this text composable and just call this uh, recipe. Let's do it all capitals so it's like really clear that this is a different fragment. I'll just do all capitals recipe fragment and use a text size of 21 SP also. So now let's run this and let's see if the navigation is working. So there we have a recipe list fragment coming into view. You can see our heading up here and we have that button that says to recipe fragment. So I click this button, boom, there we go. It takes us to recipe fragment and all the back navigation automatically kind of works. If I click the back button, it takes me back. You know, I can go there. So our navigation is working correctly. So that's it. Very simple. You can see how easy it is to use navigation component with Jetpack Compose. You pretty much change nothing. As long as you, uh, you know, use a single activity architecture and you are using multiple fragments, then it's no problem. As long as you're, you know, inflating composables like I do in fragments, then it's no problem. All right, that's going to be it for the video. If this is the first video, the first Compose video that you're watching of mine, this is actually part of a whole course. I'm building a recipe application that access this is real network data from an API that I built. And if you want to watch the rest of the course, I'll put a link up here to hopefully the playlist or the link on my website. It's going to be a free course. So watching it on my website is the best play place to do it because it tracks your progress. All the videos are going to be in order. If Jetpack Compose changes, I can update the videos. So watching it on my website is going to be the best. Actually, currently right now, as I'm filming, it's not on my website yet, but probably by the time you watch this, it will be on my website. So go to codingwithmitch.com, register an account. It's completely free. The course is completely free. And before you go, also one more thing, go down there, go down to the comment section on this YouTube video and leave me some kind of engagement. Go there and write something funny. Think of some kind of play on words with engagement like, hey Mitch, this video was engaging, all capitals or, you know, something. You know, get creative. I've seen a lot of people get very creative with this uh, sort of engagement thing that I've been asking people to do down below in the comments. So uh, leave a like, of course, if you like the video. Got to tell YouTube that you like the video. Uh, thanks for watching as always, and I will see you in that next Compose video, which I'm sure you can't wait for.